modern solutions to the struggle for natural resources in Nigeria. Could a zero grazing cattle rearing system replace the traditional open grazing system? As ethnic violence sweeps northeastern Democratic Republic of Congo, Congolese refugees recount the horrors experienced while fleeing to Uganda. We'll visit the African music scene in Canada. A radio program called Kariboni connects African artists from all over the country. Africa 54 starts right now. Hello and thanks for tuning in to Africa 54. It's a show that goes around the continent to bring stories near and far. I'm Chamberlain Nusso at Channels Television here in Lagos and I'm joined by Vincent McCurry at Voice of America in Washington. Well, thanks a lot, Chamberlain. I'm Vincent McCorry at our global headquarters in Washington, D.C. Happy to be with you again for another edition of Africa 54. Let's start off with a look at diversifying cattle rearing systems in Nigeria. Chamberlain, also in Lagos, brings you that story. Well, yes, in recent years, the struggle over natural resources has been the cause of clashes between crop and animal farmers in several states across the country. Among solutions being proffered is the adoption of a zero grazing cattle rearing system in place of the traditional open grazing system by nomadic herders. A professor of animal nutrition in Ilefe, Ocean State, is out to prove that solutions to the crisis lie in embracing modern systems. Animal nutrition specialist, Professor Adeshino Adirigbibe, is not your average cattle breeder. But like any other animal farmer, he desires maximum yield from his cattle production. The Obafemi Awolowo University Teaching and Research Farm is the site of an intensive cattle rearing system which requires zero grazing as cattle are fattened and raised in a confined feedlot. Okay. The project, which began in 2015, was established to exemplify the benefits of breeding cattle in an enclosed area as opposed to the commonly practiced open grazing. Confined to pens for between four to five cows each, the animals are given an abundant supply of food, water and medical needs. Their feed is made up of maize, rice and wheat bran, palm kernel cake, bone meal, traces of vitamins and minerals among others. Violent attacks by herdsmen and reprisal attacks by farming communities have led to wanton killings, destruction of property and displacement of many in several states. In addition to the high output obtainable in the intensive cattle rearing system, Professor Deribibe believes this holds the answer to the present national security issue. What we are doing now, if it's replicated in most places, many places, it will reduce the, ten the tension and the uh, competition for scarce grass. What is grass? Grass does not even put much value on the animal. So we are you know, we want to, uh, to, to support to establish this kind of thing. We can use this as demonstration and project it to people everywhere. Changing from the age-long practice of open grazing by the typically nomadic herdsmen may not be easy, but for the head of the Animal Science Department of the OAU, the rewards far outweigh the constraints. Individuals can... Uh they have a feedlot, the government can have a feedlot, the investors can have a feedlot. Anyone can uh, do it with proper uh, guidance. You may want to say that uh, because feed is expensive, that the, the, pro the, pro the process is expensive, maybe initially, but the return on investment is very, very high because the daily gain of the animals, the daily weight gain of the animals is quite high, unlike uh, grazing uh, animals, and it's highly profitable. To further buttress the advantage of the intensive cattle rearing system over the traditional extensive method, some herds of cow are left to graze openly with herders assigned to them. Their appearance is markedly different from that of the cows in the zero grazing projects, which are fatter and have more beef to offer when they get to the market. 
Proponents of this method believe embracing this option is the way to go, especially considering the fact that grazing reserves are no longer readily available due to urbanization and increased crop farming. <laughs> Well, joining us now for an analysis of such modern cattle production methods and how sustainable a solution it can be to the herdsmen farmers conflict is uh, Zanel Hassan, an agricultural consultant. He joins us from our studios in Abuja. Now, there are arguments that the intensive system of cattle rearing, as good as it may appear, may be too expensive for the average herdsman who may not understand the processes involved. Do you agree with this notion? Uh, thank you for having me. I do not agree that um, intensive system is very expensive. Rather, the open grazing is more expensive. Look at the impact it has, the, the challenges it has caused the country at this moment. Even the cattle rearers themselves are not happy moving around in the bush, beaten by snakes and scorpions falling ill and not being able to um, uh, access education, good health care and good uh, uh, skills for themselves and livelihood. Now this, if you look at it on the long run, is more expensive. On the other side, when you are able to keep your cattle in a static position or in, in a ranch or in, in an intensive um, uh, management system, you are able to maximize the yield of your cattle, either in terms of meat or in terms of uh, milk. Uh, secondly, you are also able to, uh, we're also able to derive the uh, maximum benefit of the value chain activities along the livestock um, uh, production activities. Right. It turns out that this modern system is not entirely new to the country. Why do you think cattle breeders are similarly focused on open grazing alone? Yes, um, for a very long time in this country, we've not taken serious um, um, livestock production. We've had a National Animal Production Research uh, Institute in Shikazaria for um, close to 100 years now, in the 1920s. And they have done several research in cattle breeding, in pasture uh, production, and done several trials and establishments across the country. Now, we have also taken the argument that, uh, that cattle rearing or livestock or production is a flanny business, which is not supposed to be so. Any Nigerian has the capacity to be able to do that. And then we've been producing animal production professionals, veterinary doctors for a very long time who have no jobs because as a, as a matter of policy, this country hasn't been able to take it's uh, serious to be able to engage those people and be able to put in place a long-term strategy that will ensure that most of these cattle breeders settle in one place, get adequate education, be able to enhance the yield of their, of their cattle and ensure that they turn their cattle into, into a major business. Let's wind down with this one. Do you see the intensive system as a viable solution to the herders farmers conflict in the country? Yes, intensive system is the only way to go. The, we, Nigeria has moved forward, population have expanded, we have expanded in terms of our um, cities have expanded, we, the areas where used to be bushes we are, are no longer bushes and then crop production activity as well. And then clashes here and there that have even led innocent um, uh, Fulanis um, to be victims of some of these um, um, clashes here and there. Uh, how we have no option at this point in time than to adopt uh, intensive management system for our cattle production. We can look at it in different dimensions, we can look at the different models, we can look at the different practices across different parts of the world and we can adopt it. Uh, we can customize it to our own local standard and see how we can be able to, 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 to move ahead. It is not a one-stop shop solution. It is a gradual process and it is something that we can work upon um, consistently for 10, 20, 30 years to come and right. we'll get to that point where uh, we will not have um, cattle uh, roaming around, causing trouble, having clashes, farmers, herders clashes here and there. All right, Mr. Zanel Hassan, thank you for talking to us today on Africa 54. Thank you, Chamberlain. 
Well, they want to know what you think about Africa 54 and the stories we cover during the conversation on Facebook. The address is Africa 54 and check out our headlines 24-7 on voaafrica.com. Coming up, polio in Nigeria. Health authorities launch an immunization campaign and renew their drive to eradicate the disease.